Welcome to Men Alive, a biblical journey to help us conform to the image of Jesus Christ. I'm your host, Paul Estabrooks. Our teacher is my longtime friend, Dr. Jim Cunningham, consultant in adult education, director of Go Teach Global, and author of the book, Men Alive. I was reading about the 10 plagues that came upon Egypt before the children of Israel were freed by Pharaoh and after the first Passover. Each plague was against one of the idol gods of Egypt. Then I noted that out in the desert of Midian, God gave Moses ten commandments. And the second commandment was, you shall have no images or idols. God gave the people all these instructions. I am the Lord your God who rescued you from the land of Egypt, the place of your slavery. You must not have any other God but me. You must not make for yourself an idol of any kind or an image of anything in the heavens or on the earth or in the sea. You must not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God who will not tolerate your affection for any other gods. I lay the sins of the parents upon the children. The entire family is affected. Even children in the third and fourth generations of those who reject me. But I lavish unfailing love for a thousand generations on those who love me and obey my commands. Jim, do we as Christian men have idols today? An idol is anything, activity, or person that consumes our time or diverts our attention away from worshiping God. Time is spelled T-I-M-E. So think of it this way. An idol is any talent, interest, money, energy that distracts our focus away from the living God. Our God is a jealous God. He hates anything we worship rather than Him. God abhorred that his chosen people, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who worshipped him, El Shaddai, the God who is in control, were constantly surrounded by the idol gods of Egypt. He did not want them bringing any idols out of Egypt, so he systematically destroyed them in front of the children of Israel. Each plague in the Bible was an attack on one of the Egyptian idol gods. First was Hapi, the god of the Nile River. Egyptians worshipped the Nile River. In fact, they believed they created the Nile River and it was the source of life. They made sacrifices to the god of the Nile. Plague number one, the Nile River turned to blood. God took the Nile River they worshipped and defiled it. They thought the Nile was the source of life, like blood is the source of life in the body. So God gave them blood, a river of blood. Think of the things that we consume our time, talent, interest, money, energy today that involves blood. Extreme sports, violence, conflicts, wars, to name it a few. Some men idolize violence and blood. Second was Hecate, the goddess of fertility. And this idol had the head of a frog. The Egyptians worshipped fertility as it granted freedom, independence, and a long life. You like frogs? You want to worship frogs? God sent Plague number two. Frogs from the Nile River swarmed to land. Frogs were everywhere. Ribbit, ribbit, night and day, everywhere, even in the bedrooms. Egyptians had a great opportunity to get to know their goddess, Hecate. Number three was Geb, the god over the dust of the earth. It's hard to imagine anyone worshipping dust, but in dry, sandy Egypt, topsoil was precious for the farmers and the survival of the nation. If you can imagine, they made an idol to Geb, the god over the dust of the earth. So God sent plague number three. Lice came from the dust of the earth. Before anyone says, that's foolish to worship the god over dust and make an idol to worship dust. Think of the idols we make that we have to dust. And we give our talent, interest, money, energies to fix them, clean them, wash them, 
repair them, and worship them. Do we have idols today, men? We sure do. We're beginning to see that each plague in Egypt was against one of the Egyptian idol gods. You're listening to Men Alive with Dr. Jim Cunningham. You can listen to other Men Alive programs on our website, goteachglobal.com. Today I encourage you to request your PDF copy of Do Men Have Idols at menaliveuntogod at gmail.com. That's menaliveuntogod at gmail.com. Now to the Egyptian plague number four. The Egyptians worshipped Kepri, the god of creation, whose statue or picture had the head of a fly. A fly. This one baffles me, Pablo. They worshipped a fly, believing it was the god of creation. In came plague number four. A swarm of flies covered Egypt. God almost reveals a sense of justice in his actions. You want to worship the fly? That can be arranged. Here are thousands of your gods, all at one time. Bzzz. Then came Hathor, the goddess of love, and the head of a cow. I do not know the relation a cow had to love in the Egyptian culture, but look at the stuff men give their time, talent, interest, money, energy to worship today and mistakenly believe it is love. Fornication, adultery, pornography, prostitutes, to name but a few. So God sent the fifth plague, death of the Egyptians, cattle and livestock, end of the worship of Hathor, the goddess of love. Next was plague six against Isis, the goddess of medicine. We hold medicine in high regard today, Jim. You and I have been blessed to have good health. We have both had a heart attack this year and had stents placed in our hearts to keep us alive. And the medicines affect our voice somewhat, as you can tell. Medicine is valuable, and we are blessed to have it, but it was never meant to replace our trust in God and His power to heal and keep us alive. God is the giver and sustainer of life. We need to keep the focus of our talent, interest, money, energy on God, our healer, not on worshiping medicine. And during Plague 6, ashes turned to boils and sores all over the bodies of the Egyptians. This pestilence was impossible to cure with a pill or a chant or by worshipping the goddess of medicine. Then came plague number seven against Nut, the goddess of the sky. This goddess of the sky apparently controlled the weather. Hail fell from the sky in the form of fire. Today we spend a lot of talent, interest, money, and energy talking about climate change. Maybe God is speaking through floods, fires, hurricanes, and earthquakes to reveal His sovereign plan. Perhaps God is partially responsible for climate change to gain our attention and redirect our focus back to Him. Men spend a lot of talent, interest, money, energy worshipping idol God activities that require the right weather. Fishing, hunting, skiing, water skiing, boating, sailing, biking hang gliding, parasailing, canoeing. Some men worshipped the outdoors as much, perhaps, as the Egyptians worshipped not the goddess of the sky. Then came plague number eight against Seth, who was the god of storms. His role was to protect the Egyptians from weather storms. Yet God sent a plague of locusts from the sky on the Egyptians that nobody could control. Man today cannot control hurricanes, floods, earthquakes, tornadoes, volcanoes, tsunamis. God gains our attention during each storm. Plague number nine was against Ra, the sun god. The sun was worshipped as the giver of life, controlling the ripening of crops. Egyptians worshipped the sun as a god. After being in Egypt for over 400 years, God did not want the children of Israel worshipping any god but the great I am that I am, El Shaddai, the God who is in control. Last plague, number 10. Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, was the ultimate power of Egypt. They worshipped him, and look what God did. 
Because Pharaoh hardened his heart and would not let the children of Israel go worship the living God in the desert, the final plague was the death of Egypt's firstborn sons, including Pharaoh's successor to the throne. Wow, that's a powerful parallel between the idols Egypt worshipped and the plagues God sent against them. God said, I do not share my glory or my creative powers with anyone or anything else. What idol gods do we worship today? I was in a Bible study group where the topic of idols came up, and one person said, We don't worship flies, frogs, and fires today. We don't bow down to a piece of wood or stone or a rock. There are no idols today. Whoops. Wrong answer. As we said at the beginning, an idol is anything, activity, or person that consumes our time, talent, interests, money, energy, and distracts our focus away from El Shaddai, the living God. Worldwide, I would suggest our biggest idol is sports. We have Olympics and World Cups and idolized teams that are victorious and have our favorite player's name stitched on the back of our shirt. Is he our idol? Then he gets sold, traded, or retires, and we must find a new idol. And what about entertainment as an idol? Those living with electricity have television, movies, computers, phones, and tablets. Each one requires more time, talent, interest, money, energy invested in their idols. Money or wealth is perhaps our biggest idol. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 24, No one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. It would be so easy for God to allow an economic downturn so severe that our money becomes virtually useless. Impossible, you say. Well, think of pre-war post-depression Germany. The inflation was so severe that the joke was that it took a wheelbarrow to carry enough money to the bakery to buy a loaf of bread. And then while you were in the bakery, people would steal the wheelbarrow because it was more valuable than the money. This is a good time to re-examine our idols. Where do we spend our T-I-M-E? Talent, interest, money, energy. And let's get rid of our idols. There you have it, men. When Jim and I were young boys, I remember his parents had a sign in their house that said, Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Let's make it count for eternity, men. Request your PDF copy of Do Men Have Idols at menaliveuntogod at gmail.com. That's menaliveuntogod at gmail.com. Men Alive is a production of Go Teach Global. Visit our website at goteachglobal.com. Until next time, I'm Paul Estabrooks on behalf of Dr. Jim Cunningham, encouraging you to become men alive, transformed into the image of Jesus Christ.